<laughs> All right, so welcome to my webinar. Again, Veronica de la Cruz. What our objectives are, what your objectives are for today will be to understand the home buying process, determine how much you can afford, understand mortgage basics and the application process, and understand your loan options, hopefully get a pre-approval, and most importantly, learn about special programs for home buyers. So in the home buying process, some things that I think are very important for you to think about and consider are number one, research your local housing market and work with professionals. This is one of the biggest um, things that you will be doing in your life. And I think it is so important that you educate yourself. If you come away with anything on this class today, I hope that it's education that gets you one step closer to buying that house. You want to discuss your loan options with a mortgage professional. I always suggest to my clients that they talk to at least three mortgage companies and or mortgage professionals. Remember, something that I can do at Citibank, perhaps somebody else can do something different and or better for you. Once you have decided on who you want to work with, you want to get that pre-approval so that when you go and look for a property, you have more purchase power. When you actually find your home, some of the steps that you want to consider are you will be submitting an offer, you'll be negotiating price, you'll want to complete your mortgage application, you definitely want to have a home inspection on your property, you want to possibly negotiate any repairs, you want to complete your final walkthrough, you want to close on your mortgage, and you want to move into your new home. Now, I am going to say that this list looks so simple and so easy, but buying a house is much more complex than this. In a perfect world, we get through all of these bullet points very quickly. But because everyone's situation is absolutely different, again, make sure that you are well in line with your real estate professional and your mortgage professional. One of the most important steps in buying a home is actually obtaining a pre-approval. There is a difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification. On a pre-qualification, pretty much what that means is that I or any other loan officer that you talk to, they've taken a general look at what you could potentially qualify for. When you get a pre-approval, we actually take that a step further. We'll take a look at your credit, We'll take a look at your income. Nine times out of 10, an underwriter will also have taken a look at all of those um, facets of your particular situation, and we will potentially issue you a pre-approval. For Citibank and most other lenders, your pre-approvals are worth 120 days, so you have all of that time to go out and look for a property. Before you buy a house, there are definitely some things that you should consider. Number one, you should determine how much you can afford. The first question that I ask my clients every single time I talk to them is how much can you pay per month? The reason that I ask this question is that you may want to pay $2,500 a month. You may qualify for a million dollar property, but that payment may be more than what you think that you can afford monthly. At the end of the day, it's always what your comfort level is. You also wanna figure out how much, if any, you have for a down payment. VCCDC is a great organization to help with possibly down payment assistance and or some closing costs. Again, you wanna calculate your monthly income and expenses, and you wanna estimate how much you can pay per month. Lastly, you wanna figure out what kind of property you have. Each specific property has different things tied to it. For example, if you decide to pay buy a condominium, versus a home, you have to know that you're going to be paying a homeowner's association due that you wouldn't really pay if you were purchasing a single family residence. Next. So we're jumping right into closing costs. When you buy a house, there are closing costs incurred. Those closing costs and that sticker price normally run about two and a half to 3% of whatever your purchase price is. That's a lot of money. Some of the closing costs that you will run into are prepaid items and non-prepaid items or recurring closing costs and non-recurring closing costs. When someone says non-recurring closing costs, that means that it's a one-time fee. 
What does that mean in English? You are paying a one-time fee for an appraisal or a one-time fee for a credit report, a one-time fee for escrow, or a one-time fee for title. A prepaid item or a recurring closing cost are things that you have to pay continually, even after you close your home loan with us. So what those types of fees are, are prepaid items like interest. You always have to pay interest on your mortgage payment, property taxes, insurance, sometimes homeowners association, and sometimes mortgage insurance. Other fees that are related that are considered non-recurring fees are things like application fees, home inspection fees, appraisal fees, credit report fees, discount fees, and we'll get discount points. We'll get into that a little later. Legal fees, title, recording, escrow and impound. Remember that falls into your um, recurring closing costs and any settlement fees. So mortgage loan financing. I think this is one of the most important slides, so please pay attention. When you actually go to purchase a home, we look at your whole entire gamut. So we look at your entire financial and credit situation. We're going to take a deep dive and take a look at your assets. We're going to look at your debts. We're going to look at your employment history. We're going to look at your income history. We're going to look at your credit history. And most importantly, people don't usually take this into consideration, but we're going to actually look at the property. Does the property value what you're buying it for? Is it valued at that? Are there anything, anything's wrong with the property? Like, uh, do you need to get something fixed or um, is the person selling it to you at market value? So those are all things that we take into consideration when we actually qualify you for a home loan. Also very important is your credit. So we don't talk about credit all the time and I think um, that's a detriment to us. Credit is so very important. Why is credit so important? It gives you access to capital. What is capital? Capital is the ability to borrow money so that you can change your financial situation. You want to know where you are today so that you can get to where you need to be and where you want to be tomorrow. So part of the things that we look at when we look at your credit is, are you making your payments on time? How many new inquiries do you have? Are you trying to get credit from a bunch of different places? Do you have any past credit problems? Did you have any collections that perhaps didn't get taken care of or medical things that may come out on your credit? What kind of credit do you have? There are different types of credit, believe it or not. There's something that's called an installment debt. That's like a car payment and it has an end date on it. A credit card debt, that's called a revolving debt, which does not have an end date because it goes over and over. You use it and you pay it and then you use it again. What kind of credit are you using? Are you maxed out on your debt or do you owe a little bit? What types of balances do you have on those credit cards or on those installment debts? All of those facets go to give you X credit score. Application checklist. So when and after you've gone through your mortgage and we've done your credit and you've done all of these things, what you want to have is you want to have a copy of your sales contract. And once you have found a property and you've put an offer, then you will have that. Your uh, agent will have given that to you. You want to make sure that you're giving to your financial institution, your employment and your income information. Normally, the rule of thumb is two, two, two. Two months bank statements, two pay stubs, and two years of income history. Everyone's situation is very particular and very unique. So two, two, and two is not always the case. Again, it's just the general rule of thumb. For your assets and your bank statements, also two, two months, all pages. Identification, we will want to make sure that you are who you are. We want to know any other outstanding debts that may not be showing up on your credit. Um, we want to know what your current housing payment is. And again, any other documents, if applicable, based on your particular situation. Monthly payment. Um, this is probably, again, one of my favorite slides because it really goes into detail as to what you actually pay per month for your home. If you notice here, there are one, two, three, four, only four things that are listed on here. 
Um, but there are actually up to five things that you will pay monthly for your mortgage payment. The first one is your mortgage payment, which is actually the loan. So you said, Veronica, can I borrow $500,000? And I said, yes, but I am going to charge you this amount of money. And this is the amount of, amount of money that you need to pay. That's the first thing that you pay with your mortgage payment. The second thing that you will be paying are your property taxes. With our particular home run product, we do require that you pay that with your mortgage payment if you are putting 10% or less down. So, so far we have your mortgage payment and your property taxes. The third thing that you have to pay with your mortgage payment is your hazard insurance. Hazard insurance is something that you buy in case there's a fire, in case there's a theft, in case something funky happens to your house and you need to get that fixed. That's what that insurance is for. The fourth thing that you could potentially pay for monthly is a homeowner's association fee. So if you buy a condominium or a PUD or a townhome or even a single family that has a homeowner's association fee, that's something that is added to your mortgage payment. Homeowner's association fee usually just take care of all of the grounds and maintenance of whatever that little community that you're purchasing in. Fifth and most importantly is mortgage insurance or private mortgage insurance. Most institutions that lend you money will require that you pay private mortgage insurance if you are putting 20% down or less. I will give you a sneak peek and tell you that our home run product allows for a low down payment with no mortgage insurance. The last thing that you see listed on here is flood insurance. That is always a requirement that you have to pay monthly if your property is dedicated in a flood zone. That's not always the case. Speak to your lender, speak to your realtor so that you can find out whether or not your particular property is in a flood zone. And one more item that I don't see on there, there is another tax that is called a mellow roost tax. If you are looking in a newer community where houses are blooming and beginning to be built, sometimes these communities tack on an added tax. And that added tax is called a mellow roost it's normally about 1% more. So whatever you're paying in taxes, if you're buying a new property, make sure you ask about Melarus taxes as well. So all of those things said, already I see six things that you would have to pay monthly. So remember when you're buying a house, you have to take into consideration every single thing that you will be paying on a monthly payment because you want to ensure that you not only qualify for the mortgage payment, but you want to qualify for the whole entire thing in your own comfort zone. How lenders determine what you can afford. So what this slide is going to talk about for you is pretty much giving you information as to how we qualify someone. How we qualify someone is very simple. We actually use very simple math. We take your income and we divide it by all of your debt. And when I say all of your debt, I mean your new proposed mortgage insurance that includes, remember those items up to six, but right now we're gonna use mortgage insurance, property taxes, insurance, and possibly um, hazard insurance. So we take that and we divide it. And what that gives us is it gives us what's called a ratio. So when I use a nice even number like $5,000, let's say you make $5,000 a month. And let's say that we can lend you up to 50% what we call DTI, debt to income ratio. That means that if you made $5,000 a month, you would qualify for a total payment. That means your house, your car payment, your credit cards, all of that debt, you would qualify for a total monthly debt of $2,500. If we used $10,000 and you made $10,000 a month, then that means that you would qualify for a total debt of $5,000. Now keep in mind that Citibank does not go all the way up to 50%. That is definitely for um, educational purposes right now so that you can understand plus or minus how we actually qualify someone for a home loan or how we determine what you can afford. Overview of the mortgage process. So if you remember at the beginning of the slide or beginning of the presentation, we just went through, you find your house, you get your loan, you do your walkthrough and you get your keys. There's so much more that's going on behind the scenes of that. You are actually uh, required to do your mortgage application. You have to give me all of your information, your bank information, your income information, your credit information, and so on and so forth. 
What my job is, what a lender's job is, is to take a look at all of that information. We calculate it and we determine how much we think you can buy. And what we do then is we submit that over to our underwriter. Our underwriter then determines, agrees with us and says, hey, your income calculation was spot on, Veronica. These people qualify. Or they say, you know what? No, I don't like that they had this gap in their history. I think we maybe are going to lower their income a little bit. So it's very, very important that you know that the mortgage application is not as simple as it seems. It goes through many hands and it goes through many eyes. And at the end of the day, we come to an accord and you will be issued what is called an approval. In that approval, our underwriter will say, Veronica, your client is approved on the condition that they submit to me A, B, and C. Once that happens and you submit that information back to the bank or back to Veronica, it goes all the way back through that cycle again. And then at the end of the day, um, you sign your loan documents, you close your loan, and you get your keys. Facts about your mortgage. Understanding your mortgage. Um, this is a pretty good slide, too. It gives you some basic information. So guess what? The less money that you borrow from me, the lower your payment is going to be. So the larger your down payment, the less your monthly payment is going to be. A loan with less than 20% of the purchase price may require private mortgage insurance. I did touch on this earlier and I will touch on it again. When you are putting less than 20% down, most places will require that you pay mortgage insurance. Again, Citibank has a wonderful product that offers zero mortgage insurance with minimum down. I will be reviewing that a little bit later, so hopefully you can stay tuned so that you can learn more about that. Your home serves as collateral for the loan until the mortgage is paid off. What the heck does that even mean? Basically, it means that we have your house until you pay us all of that money. And then at the end of the day, that house belongs completely to you. Your interest rate, along with the term and the amount of the loan, determines your monthly principal and interest. Sometimes the way that they say this, I'm just I'm like, what the heck is going on? So what that means in English is that if you buy X amount of money and I charge you Y interest rate, that is going to give you your payment. So it's your loan amount and whatever the interest rate that gives you your mortgage payment. Terms to know, annual percentage rate and variable interest rate. APR. Um, I don't get this question often anymore, but I love this question. What is APR? Annual percentage rate. What an annual percentage rate is, it's actually a tool for you, the consumer, to go from bank to bank to bank, lender, 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 to see who is actually charging you more money or who is charging you less money. The lower your APR, the lower that institution is charging you. Keep in mind that most institutions are within an eighth of each other. So pretty much we're all charging about the same amount. The APR is not the rate that's on your note. Please make sure that you understand that as well. The APR is merely a tool so that you can see again, who's charging you more money or who's charging you less money. If you are quoted a 6% rate on a $500,000 loan on your note, that is what you will be paying. You will be paying 6% on 500,000. A variable interest rate is exactly that. It means it's an interest rate that goes up and down with the market. Variable interest rates are good for some clients, whereas they're not so great for other clients. It's truly dependent upon how you manage your money, what your goals are with your property, Let's say you want to sell your property in five years and you already know this in your head. You may consider a variable loan because you're only going to keep this loan with me for five years. So why would you pay me more money if you're going to get rid of it in five years? Um, the difference between a variable rate and a 30 year fixed rate is a variable rate is fixed for X number of years, whereas a fixed rate or a 30 year fixed rate is fixed for the entire duration of your home loan. Next slide. Whoa. Rate lock and mortgage discount points. When you purchase a home, you are required to lock in your interest rate. 
whether you buy with Citibank or whether you buy with a direct lender or with another bank, each institution can lock your rate for a certain period of days. The lower the number of days that you lock, the lower your interest rate. I'll repeat that. The lower the number of days that you lock, the lower your interest rate and or the lower that cost is. If you decided to lock a rate for 30 days, you would get a lower rate and or cost versus someone who decided to lock their rate for 90 days. So locks are, our rates are particular as to how long you would like to lock them. Some lenders, they can lock them for like two weeks. Um, I'm not very comfortable with that because what if you don't close your loan in two weeks or what if you're playing the market to see what the rates do? Uh, speak with your lender in regard to locking your loan and asking them how long it will take to close your transaction because that's something you definitely want to consider. Mortgage discount points. For the life of me, I've been doing this for 25 years and I really don't know why they call them discount points because it's not a discount. It's more money. So a discount point is actually a fee that you pay so that you can get a lower interest rate. And discount points are not point for point. So it's not one point that you pay and you get one point less. Interest rates change on a daily basis. Sometimes they change multiple times a day. Today, one point cost could only lower your rate by one eighth. Tomorrow, one point cost could lower your rate by an entire half a point. Definitely talk to your mortgage professional so that you can discuss that because if your seller is paying for any of your closing costs or if you have any lender paid assistance, you can always try to use that money to do what's called buy down your interest rate and get a lower rate. And guess what happens when you get a lower rate? Get a lower payment. So definitely speak to someone about that. Types of mortgages offered by Citi. So we offer a full gamut of products, and this is a basic overview of some of the products that we have. So we have a fixed rate mortgage that's a regular, boring, conforming loan. And those are great loans. Uh, every single loan on here is a great loan, but these are very cookie cutter loans. An adjustable rate mortgage, we just talked about that. That's a variable mortgage. So you can get a loan that is fixed for five years. And then after in the sixth year, their interest rate can go up and down, um, fixed for seven years or fixed for 10 years. Again, after your fixed period is up is when your interest rate has the ability to go up or go down. FHA. FHA is another avenue for you to possibly obtain home financing. FHA has a little more lenient in their credit underwriting guidelines, and they have a lower down payment of three and a half percent. VA loans, which are one of my favorite loans, they offer 100% financing to veterans, and um, they have a lot of things that actually protect our veterans. They can't pay for a lot of closing costs. There's no mortgage insurance monthly on that. And again, they can lend all the way up to 100%. I'll, I'll repeat again, you do have to speak with your mortgage professional for that because everyone's situation is completely individual and particular. Other city programs that we have. So resources. We work with a lot of nonprofit housing associations and organizations just like VCCDC. If you have any questions about down payment assistance programs, I highly suggest that you speak with any of the representatives at VCCDC. They will tell you or they will guide you as to whether or not you can qualify for any down payment assistance programs. What do these down payment assistance programs do for you? Remember at the beginning when I said that the less money that you borrow from Citibank or any institution, the lower your monthly mortgage payment. Citibank has a fantastic program that's called the Home Run, where you can put as little as 3% down. Remember, if you're putting 3% down, you're still going to have a kind of hefty payment because you've only put 3% down. But let's say you talk to someone at VCCDC and they know of a product that will give you an extra $20,000 or they know of a product that will give you an extra $50,000 to help for that down payment. You just turned your down payment from 3% maybe into 10% 
maybe even into 15%. And again, the end goal is to get you that lowest payment possible. So we do work with um, organizations such as VCCDC, speak to someone there or speak to a local representative uh, loan officer, and they can help you um, and guide you through some of those other products. Specific to Citibank, I will say again, we have what is called our home run product. If you can see on the list there, there's conventional bond programs, city home run, lender paid assistance, and down payment and closing cost assistance. Home run product, product is superior. The reason being is that we will give you that minimum of 3% down. So we'll use a $500,000 house. If you found a house that was worth $500,000, you would potentially be able to purchase that house with the home run product, giving a low down payment of 3% down. What's the beauty of the home run? Even though you're giving a, no, a low down payment, this particular product has no mortgage insurance. So if you remember, we talked about four or five things that you have to pay all inclusive with your mortgage payment. Guess what? On the home run, delete that mortgage insurance. It does not exist. The other groovy thing about the home run is that it's usually lower in interest rate versus any of the other products that are out there. Because it is Citibank's own loan and it is a proprietary loan, our rates are slightly lower than that. A couple of caveats on the product. You do have to live in the product. You cannot own any other homes if you do decide to utilize our product. You do not have to be a first time home buyer, although it is great for first time home buyers. It's also great for what we call a move up buyer or a move down buyer. Let's say you bought a condominium a few years ago and you're ready to move into a single family residence. You can sell that condo, you can buy that single family residence and you can still utilize our home run product. Our home run product does require a minimum credit score of 640 and it does require that minimum down of 3%. But guess what else? Part of that 3% can come in the form of a gift. It can come in the form of hopefully down payment assistance program guided by VCCDC. It come, can come in the form of um, another down payment assistance that's perhaps a loan and not a grant. So there are definitely ways to tailor this to suit your individual needs. City Lender Paid Assistance Program. Sorry, <laughs> I was going to pop right into that and I wasn't sure if that's what it is. Aside from giving you the fantastic home run, aside from being able to come in with a very low down payment and still have a manageable monthly mortgage payment because you are not going to pay that mortgage interest, Citibank is also willing to offer to pay up to $7,500 of your non-recurring closing costs. If you're taking notes, you'll remember that non-recurring closing costs are closing costs that are one-time fees only. So things of that nature would be like your appraisal fee, your credit report fee, your escrow fee, your title fee, your notary fee. Remember, all these things are happening behind the scenes when we are trying to get this home loan for you. And there are a multitude of companies that are involved and each and every company, unfortunately, charges X number of dollars. So we will pay up to $7,500 of those closing costs. One of the other requirements of our home run product and of our lender paid assistance product is you are required to take a home buying education course. Those home buying education courses are offered online or in person, again, through VCCDC, and they're really great um, classes. Even if you don't utilize home run, I do suggest that you take one of those classes because it goes over in detail a lot of what we're going over today, and knowledge is power. So important that you educate yourself as much as you can. Community assistance programs, we did touch on this already. And um, unfortunately, this is something, what's well, not unfortunate, but we would send you again to our partner VCCDC to see if there are any community assistance programs out there. Some examples of community assistance programs would be uh, City of Oxnard has a product and, and a program that helps you with the down payment. There is another product out there that's called the WISH program. They will also give you, match you $3 for each dollar um, for a down payment. Some of these programs Citibank can work with and some of them cannot. Don't forget, talk to your local lender and talk to your local VCCDC representative to learn more about those products. 
Wow, <laughs> my timing was perfect. <laughs> Thank you for your participation. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. My cell phone number is 805-340-0994. My NMLS number is 450-360-Y hablo Español. Muchísimas gracias y que lo pasen muy bien.